Howdy! In this lesson, we're going to be applying thin airfoil theory to a cambered airfoil. We'll start off once again with our thin airfoil theory equation, which is this 1 over 2 pi times the integral from 0 to pi of gamma of theta times sine of theta d theta all over a cosine theta minus a cosine of theta naught. Now before, this was simply equal to v infinity times alpha. But because we're interested in the camber of the airfoil, we now have to include this dz by dx term. This was originally a function of x, but since we transformed everything else into theta coordinates, this now has to be a function of theta naught. So we have a solution to this. It's just given to us by the book. And once again, the math is a little hard, so we'll just skip to exactly what the solution was. So we have some gamma of theta, and it's going to be equal to 2 times v infinity times a naught 1 plus cosine theta over sine theta. And added to that is going to be an infinite sum. n is equal to 1 to infinity times a n sine of n theta. So you may recognize this as a Fourier series, but the idea here is that we can represent any curve, any function of theta, as an infinite sum of sine terms. So the question now is, what exactly are our an terms? To answer that, we're going to plug this gamma back into our thin airfoil equation. And what we arrive at, after we cancel the 2 here and the v infinity here, is 1 over pi times the integral from 0 to pi times our a naught term. And we'll have our 1 plus cosine theta. This sine theta and this sine theta will cancel. And so we'll just have a d theta on top. And once again, we'll have cosine theta minus cosine of theta naught in the denominator. Now, we'll need to add our infinite sum. So this becomes a 1 over pi. And we'll take the sum from n is equal to 1 to infinity. We'll move this a n in front of the integral as well. So that we have a n, we'll have an integral from 0 to pi times sine of n theta times sine of theta d theta all over cosine of theta minus cosine of theta naught. And all of this is going to be equal to alpha minus dz by dx. So the next step is to evaluate these integrals. Uh, we're going to cheat a little bit again and simply say that this is equal to a naught times pi. Uh, we solved this back, or we didn't solve, but we used this back in the symmetric airfoil section. Uh, this integral is equal to negative pi times cosine of n theta naught. So plugging all this in, the pi's will cancel out, and we'll be left with a, so after solving for dz by dx, we'll be left with dz by dx is equal to alpha minus a naught plus this infinite sum from 1 to infinity of a of n cosine of n theta naught. Now, this 
links our a n terms to our slope. So what we need to do next is actually evaluate each of these a n terms. So how do we do that? Well, we do a little bit of a trick uh, that's used in Fourier analysis, and that is simply integrate once again from zero to pi. But this time, we're going to be integrating times cosine of m theta naught. And this will be a d theta naught on the other side. And then we'll integrate from zero to pi all of this times cosine of m theta naught d theta. And then we can just start cycling through a whole bunch of different m's in order to start working out what exactly these terms are going to be. So let's start with the easy one and look at m is equal to 0. So if m is equal to 0, then our left-hand side simply becomes the integral from 0 to pi of dz by dx times d theta naught. Now, on our right-hand side, uh, it's this term again will be equal to 1. So the integral of cosine of n theta over from 0 to pi for any value of n that is not 0 will be 0. So if m is equal to 0, then all of these terms go to 0. So we have an infinite number of terms, and all of them will be equal to 0 on this integral from 0 to pi. So all we'd be left with is the integral from 0 to pi of a constant, or just pi, times alpha minus a naught. Great. Okay, so now let's look at our m's that are not equal to 0. So in this case, we can ignore our alpha minus a naught term since the integral from 0 to pi of a constant times this term is going to be equal to 0. So what we'll have now is the integral from 0 to pi of cosine of m theta naught times our dz by dx term times d theta naught is going to be equal to this infinite sum times a n and we'll have our integral from 0 to pi cosine of n theta naught multiplied by our cosine of m theta naught times d theta naught. Now, the trick here is that this term is equal to pi over 2 if n is equal to m, and it's equal to 0 if n is not equal to m. So what we end up with is that this a n term, so this will be pi over 2 if n is equal to m. So we can have an a n term that is equal to 2 over pi times the integral from 0 to pi times dz by dx cosine, and if n is equal to m, we can just use an n here. So cosine of n theta naught d theta naught. So we have an evaluation of our a naught term. We also have an evaluation of our a n's.